doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Hey, welcome to Musty Movies. I'm Ryan Drew. And I'm Matt Egan. On this show, we'll review four recently released movies and we'll flash back to a different decade and review one classic film. I choose the first movie this week, and that movie is Wonder Woman. Before she was Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gordot, she was Diana, princess of the Amazons, trained by, to, be, to be unconquerable warrior. She was raised on a sheltered island paradise inhabited completely by women. Diana meets an American pilot, Chris Pine, who crash-landed his airplane just off the coast of the island. He tells her about the massive conflict that's raging in the outside world. Convinced that she can stop the threat, Diana leaves her home for the first time, never to return. Fighting alongside men in the war to end all wars, she finally discovers her full powers and true destiny. Very interesting concept we've got there. Did you see this movie? No, I haven't seen the movies. I have seen the trailers for it, though, and I actually do want to see the movie. It actually looks like it is a good movie, and, I, and I'm not a big fan of superhero movies, so that's, you know... Actually, interesting. Before I give my full opinion on it, I think we should watch the trailer for Wonder Woman. Definitely. Let's take a look at it. I used to want to save the world. This beautiful place. But the closer you get, the more you see the great darkness within. I learned this the hard way a long, long time ago. What is your mission? To stop the war. What war? The war to end all wars. Weapons far deadlier than you can ever imagine. The war can be ours. Wherever you are, you are in more danger than you think. I cannot stand by while innocent lives are lost. Be careful, Diana. Who is this woman? She's my um, secretary, sir. She's a very good secretary. It is our sacred duty to defend the world. And it's what I'm going to do. Principles. Although, I am not opposed to engaging in a bit of fisticuffs, should the occasion arise. That was the trailer to Wonder Woman. Uh, the, I had my doubts about this movie from the trailers, based off of the other DCEU, which is the DC Extended Universe movies, which is Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Suicide Squad. Uh, no, All man, three, no. which I did not like. Yeah, I know Super Batman vs Superman. That was supposed, uh, supposedly real bad, actually. It was. Um, it was pretty bad, but uh, and she, Gal Gadot, the lady that plays Wonder Woman, she wasn't that good in that movie, but she was really good in the Fast and Furious franchise when she right. was in it. But this movie, she saw, shines as an actor. It's one of the better. It's the best DCEU movie. It was one of the best superhero movies to come out of the past couple of years, and that's saying something since it's just been. Lots and lots yeah, there's, of Yeah, there's been a lot. I mean, you had Guardians of the Galaxy, Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad, which was massively pos uh, popular. 
you know, and so forth. But, yeah, you know, I look at the trailer of this movie, like I said, I haven't yet seen it. I really want to see it. It does look very, very good, and I probably definitely will check it out. Uh, and on to my first movie, War of the Planet of the Apes. The chimpanzee Caesar, played by Andy Serkis, motion, cap motion capturely, as that's how you say that word, and his... Apes are forced into a deadly conflict with an army of humans led by Ruthless Colonial, played by Woody Harrelson. After the apes suffer an unimaginable loss, Caesar wrestles with his darker instincts and begins his own mythic quest to avenge his kind. As the journey finally brings them face to face, Caesar and the Colonial are pitted against each other in an epic battle with the determined that will determine the fate of both their species and the future of the planet. I mean, you know, it sounds really interesting. I mean, the series, what, it had a reboot, I think it was 2011, was it, with, what was it, the, Dawn uh, Rise, of, Rise of the Planet Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and then 2014 with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. That's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. Um, and they were both excellent movies, and they're shined by the lead actor, Andy Serkis, who course. plays the monkey through all of them. And the but, motion capture is phenomenal, the way they did it. They did it really nicely. Um, it, it looks really good. Anyway, let's uh, take You know what else looks really good? The trailer to this movie, which we should watch. Well, I was about to say that, so. I see, girl. I think you human. Oh, but you ape like me. No, no, no. Put down. How long have you been here? Long, long time. <laughs> Home. Are there more like you? More apes from zoo. Dead. All dead. Long time. Human gets sick. Ape gets smart. Then human kill ape. But not me. I run. You learn to speak. Listen. Human. Bad ape. No touch. That that's mine. I'm okay. Oh. 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 Eat. Eat. New friends. Special day. Here, you keep. She keep. Where did you get this? Bad place. Human zoo. Bad human. Bad humans. Soldiers. Human zoo? No! No, no, go back there. Very safe here. Never go back. No, look, look, look. More snow. Cannot go. Must stay. <gasps> In my opinion, that is the best movie of the year so far. By far the best looking film of the year yeah, so Yeah, definitely. I gotta agree with you on the visual side of things, at least. I haven't seen the full movie, but visually from the trailer, it looks stunning. The monkeys meld in excellently with the regular people. Like, you can barely tell the difference. Mm -hmm. 
the acting by the people in the motion capture playing the apes like Caesar yeah, or yeah, Maurice, yeah. which is the orangutan and the main character, is excellent. The per Andy Circus I think should get recommended for an Academy Award for his uh, portrayal of Caesar in this movie. It's uh, it's uh, the ending of a trilogy. You can de there's definitely not going to be another one. Like you can tell that by how throughout the movie. But probably, it was just a great movie. Probably why they put so much work into it, end out on a high note, you know? Yeah. Anyway, my second movie this week is Spider-Man Homecoming. Thrilled by his experience with the Avengers, young Peter Parker, played by Tom Holland, returns home to live with his Aunt May under the watchful eye of mentor Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. Parker starts to embrace his newfound identity as Spider-Man. He also tries to return to his normal daily routine, distracted by thoughts of proving himself to be more than just a friendly neighborhood superhero, Peter must soon put his powers to the test with the evil vulture, um, when the evil vulture emerges to threaten everything that he holds dear. Uh, I saw this movie just the other day, and it's, it's a great movie, mm. by far the best Spider-Man movie out so far, and by far has the best villain with Michael Keaton as the vulture. Haven't the last few Spider-Man movies actually been regarded as not that great? Not that great. Yeah, that's that is true. That's one way to put it. Anyway. What you know is what is great. The trailer to Spider-Man. Yeah, Homecoming. let's take a look at it. Finally, here we go. Good evening, Peter. Oh, you have 576 possible web shooter combinations. That is awesome. I can keep that suit. Yeah, doesn't fit me. So when's our next retreat? What next mission? We'll call you. All right. That's not a hug. I'm just grabbing the door for you. I'm not there yet. All right, kid. Good luck out there. Hey, Peter. You coming tonight? I can't tonight. I got the Stark internship. What's up, guys? Mr. Stark, here's my report for tonight. I stopped the Grand Theft Bicycle. Hey, could you do me a favor? Hold on to that. Is this anybody's bike? Oh, I helped this old lady, and she bought me a churro. So, that was nice. I just feel like I could be doing more. Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. Hulk gives it away. New move I'm working on. Not bad. Oh. Oh my God, this feels so strange. Oh. Hey These weapons are crazy dangerous. Listen, Peter, there are people who handle this sort of thing. Can't you just be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Let go of me, let go of me. Activating parachute. The world's changing, boys. It's time we change, too. This is my chance to prove myself. We have a Spanish quiz. You gotta get better at this part of the job. I don't understand. No! Oh, I'm intimidating. Oh, hey, yes. My friends are up there. Hey, where are you going? What are you hiding, Peter? I'm just kidding, I don't care. Bye. There's a ton of other subsystems in here, but they're all disabled by the training wheels protocol. I'm sick of Mr. Stark treating me like a kid. But you are a kid. Yeah, a kid who can stop a bus with his bare hands. I think this that was the trailer Homecoming? Yeah, I think, I think this is another movie, in the visual department at least, that's going to be very high up there, at least on the movie. You know, because you, you see the special effects they use, they look very well done. Um, you know, the, uh, the little robot thing you saw in the trailer, was that on the side of, I don't know what they were, some kind of building. It looked, you know, it looked real, real-ish. Uh, the acting in this movie is amazing, mostly by Tom Holland, who plays Spider-Man. Uh, Michael Keaton as the bad guy, the vulture, is amazing. Well, the designs of this movie from the comic book, it like the comic version of Broke is very silly. It's like man, an old bald man in a feathered suit where you can only see his head. But this one is like actual armor, not actual robotics, and looks really nice. Uh, right. Do you have any opinions? Um, yeah, man, not really. I don't like. I said I, I don't see a lot of these movies, but it looks good. It. You know, it definitely looks like a movie I'd want to see. And again, from a visual standpoint, I think it looks great. That's really uh, one of the biggest things I think about. Visually, it looks nice. Um, Get 
you know, good cinematics, good camera work, all that kind of stuff, which is very crucial to making a good movie. You have to have the movie look good uh, for the audience to really be sucked in. Uh, and that it did, it was a really funny movie. It's making a lot of money at the box office, really helps. I want to see another one, but by what I'm hearing, we're only going to see one more, which is really unfortunate. Well, you never know. It depends on how good this movie does. But uh, real quick, we are going to take a break for a public service announcement. For your public service. For your public Hey, it's true. Public service announcement. We, I love public service announcements. They're good. There's a ton of other subsystems in here, but they're all disabled by the training wheels protocol. I'm sick of Mr. Stark treating me like a kid. But you are a kid. Yeah, a kid who can stop a bus with his bare hands. And that was the trailer of Spider-Man Homecoming. As you can see, it's a great looking film. The effects are amazing. The costume design in yeah. the movie is amazing. Well, I was, I was going to say that, yeah. Visually, I think this is going to be up there with um, Planet of the Apes, at least from a you know, special effects design and costume design. And I, I think that's one of the most important parts of the movie that's actually overlooked in some cases. Because in my opinion, to have a really good movie, you obviously need good actors, good cast. You need good cinematics, and you definitely need good visuals because you know it really helps uh, break the um, what's the word? Uh, Ice. Uh, no, no, uh, illusion of disbelief, suspension of disbelief. That's what it's called. You know, to really get immersed in the movie, you need to have something that looks good as well as uh, acted well. It's uh, acted extremely well with actor Tom Holland acting the best out of all the other Spider Mans. But uh, I think it's time to move on to my second film, which is also takes place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and also came out this year. That's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Peter Quill, played by Chris Pratt and his fellow Guardians, played by Bradley Cooper, Zo Zoe Saldana, uh, Dave Bautista, and Vin Diesel, are hired by a powerful alien race, the Sovereign, to protect their precious batteries from invaders. When it's discovered that Rocket, played by Bradley Cooper, has stolen it, the items they were sent to guard, the Sovereign dispatches their armada to search for the vengeance. As the Guardians try to escape, the mystery of Peter's parentage is revealed. I mean, I saw the first one. I really, I really liked the first movie. You know, uh, my favorite character in the movie was actually Rocket, just because he's really funny. You know, and uh, I like those kind of secondary, uh, almost comic relief com characters. The favorite scene from the first movie was um, when he stole. Remember in the prison when he stole the guy's leg? That was pretty funny. Yeah. Do you know what else is funny? The trailer to Guardians of the Galaxy Two. We we should watch. Yes. Because it's amazing. It is. It's a great trailer. The fate of the universe lies on your shoulders. Now, whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb immediately, and we'll all be dead. Now, repeat back what I just said. I agree. No! No, that's the button that will kill everyone. Try again. I am Groot. Mm-hmm. I am Groot. Uh-huh. I am Groot. No! Showtime, a-holes. Ah! Yeah, I feel a general unselfish love for just about everybody. No, sexual love. No, no, I don't. For her. No. 
See, you just told everyone your deepest, darkest secret. Dude, uh, come on. I think you're overreacting a little bit. You must be so embarrassed. <laughs> do me, do me, do me. And that was the trailer of the Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which the ending joke said by uh, Dave Bautista, who plays Drax the Destroyer. He's by far the, the person who steals the movie. He's hilarious in the movie, and he's actually a really good actor. The other person who also steals the movie is Michael Rooker, who plays Yondu. He is amazing, by far. Do you have any opinions about this movie? Um, my vote for best soundtrack of the year, just because I love classic rock, and I know this movie definitely has a lot of that in it. The opening song you mentioned, Mr. Blue Sky, and then you had the song that was in that. I think that was Fox on the Run. Yeah. And so... Favorite soundtrack by far, just because I love classic rock, and just from that, I, I think that's going to be good. The ensemble acting is great, the design is great, and as a lot of people complain, these Avengers movies, which just take place in the same universe, really lack in quality of villains, and the villain in this movie is amazing, and they're kind of coming back, like, again, what I said with Spider-Man, with another great villain. But I think it's time to go to our classic movie of the week, Back to the Future. Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, a 17-year-old high school student, accidentally sent 30 years into the past but by a time-traveling DeLorean. Hey, if you're going to go in the past, do it in style. Invented by his close friend, the maverick scientist Doc Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd, Marty must get back home and not alter the timeline even while he spends time with his mother, who at the time is a teenager. I love the trilogy. This uh, happened to me yesterday. Interesting. <laughs> I love this trilogy of movies. It's, they were great. Do you know what else happened to me yesterday? No. I watched a trailer to Back to the Future, which I wouldn't mind watching again today. Some of the best segues in this show. Spielberg presents Back to the Future, a Robert Zemeckis film. Marty leads an ordinary life. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. Well, history is going to change. And 1985 is not his year. But Dr. Brown is about to change all that. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? He's sending Marty 30 years back in time. Now, he's trapped in the past. This has got to be a dream. About to meet... Chocolate. ...his future father. He's a peeping tough. Wow! And he's making an impression on his mother. He's an absolute dream. And he can sleep in my room. Ah. Anything you do could have serious repercussions on future events. Ah! Now, he's got to make his mother and father fall in love. For crying out loud, I haven't even been born yet. And only Dr. Brown... <laughs> can help him get back to the future. Are you telling me that this sucker is nuclear? Precisely. Michael J. Fox. Whoa, this is heavy. Christopher Lloyd. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Back to the future. That was the trailer to Back to the Future, the Robert Zemeckis directed film. It, uh... Start it really rocketed uh, Marty McFly. I can't remember. I'm blanking on his Michael name. Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox's career into the stardom and it made Christopher Lloyd a, a name that everyone remembers yeah, yeah. today. I think a lot of people remember this movie just because have how well all three of them was. Because usually you have movies that are a trilogy like this, they kind of fall off in quality as they go. I really don't. I don't think this series did that per se. I think it stayed very good. Throughout the whole thing, I, I, I just want to say I love old movie trailers because they're so cheesy, but it's like you still get the idea that it's going to be a good movie. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a classic movie. I can't say Without much about it because like, I don't know a single person who hasn't seen this movie. Yeah, so. what can you say that hasn't been said already, really? Yeah. But uh, now it's on to the top five movies in the box office for this week. Number five coming in is The Big Sick. Which uh, I heard is amazing. It stars Ray Romano and it's actually based off a true story. The director, writer, and the person starring in it, this all actually happened to him. Oh, it's wow. how he met his wife. 
should make for a good movie. At number four, we have Baby Driver. Uh, can't say I've actually heard about this movie at all. I have. I heard it's actually amazing, great acting, and it's uh, Edgar Wright's uh, return into writing film by right. himself. So at number three, we have Despicable Me 3, which my family went to go see without me because they decided they don't love me anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've seen the trailers for that movie, and it, uh, I like animated movies, so it looks interesting, I guess. Do you know what movie is interesting? What? Spider-Man Homecoming, which comes in at number two at the box office, with the strongest opening weekend, which was last week, of any other Spider-Man films. We already talked about this movie at length, yeah, yeah. and it's amazing. I still recommend to go see it. And, and number one, we have another movie we've talked to, which was War of the Planet of the uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, again, we've talked about this. It looks like a really great movie. Yep, that it does, because it is a great movie. Yeah, and that's all we have of this week. And I'm Ryan Drew, and I'm Matt, and I'm Drew, and that's what matters in the end. And you're watching Must See Movies. What? We'll